Welcome or welcome back friends. I'm Jasmine, a first year BA Japanese student in London. I've already been learning Japanese for more than six years and today I'm going to show you how I study Japanese in the hopes to make your language journey easier. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu! For my friends that would like to learn hiragana and katakana, my top three apps are Dr. Moku, Learn Japanese and Write It Japanese. I did in fact invest in Dr. Moku's app to learn kana in around a week, as their mnemonic system is amazing. Of course, learning and mastering are two different things. Learn Japanese includes kana as well as the basics such as particles, question words and adjectives. I've only tried the Hangul version of this app, so I have no doubt that you'll be able to learn kana here too with the practice mode and the test mode. Workbooks are just as important as writing is different on the iPad compared to paper. This is the oldest book on my shelf and I would recommend to buy a workbook once you're able to sound out or pronounce kana without any help. Japanese Pod 101 honestly has everything you need when it comes to learning kana for free. As long as you have an iPad or a printer, you can use their videos to learn pronunciation. Then this whole workbook includes a ton of practice for each character, example words and even flashcards. While Busu and Skritta are great for beginners, Learn Kanji is currently my favourite app that I use on a daily basis to learn kanji and even vocab. It includes levels from N5 to N1, which is all you need when it comes to Japanese. I'm currently studying really hard this summer to complete the entire N3 course, which is a crazy 650 kanji. That would total to around a thousand kanji stored in my brain. These are the only three workbooks I think you will ever need for kanji. A mnemonics book is crucial because it can get very confusing very quickly. And depending on how far you want to go with Japanese, a book with 5,000 or 1,000 kanji is sufficient. Of course, this book with 1,000 is my favourite. And while it wasn't cheap, it was a thousand percent worth it, as buying separate JLPT kanji books would have been much more expensive. The two main apps that I use for reading practice are Satori Reader and Todai. I would probably use this app more if I had the pro version, but as you can see, I am really into their Nutshell Grammar series. The main appeal is their extensive range of fiction that you can read from upper beginner to advanced level. Within each story series, there are a ton of chapters with easier and harder editions where you're able to see the difficulty rating. Each story isn't too long and probably takes around 5-10 to 10 minutes to read and digest. You can also save grammar points and vocabulary to your study list. Tordai or Easy News on the other hand can be your daily dose of non-fiction as it's full of news from many different sources condensed into bite-sized articles just like Satori Reader. You can highlight any part of a sentence for instant translation, learn more about a word or kanji, hear it being pronounced and more. The coloured underline shows which JLPT level the vocabulary is from, so you can pick articles that suit your reading ability. I am yet to tackle the difficult section as I'm just approaching advanced Japanese, but it's great that you can also watch the articles in this section. I don't use this source for reading often, but for those who prefer to read on the web, NHK Easy News is another great resource if you are an intermediate. I say this because you don't have the instant translation or the vocab saving tools like the apps. You only have the choice of removing the furigana and having the articles read aloud. When it comes to books, these are my top 4 for reading practice. First we have the Lingo Mastery series where the short stories book is super beginner friendly with sentence by sentence translation, a quiz after every chapter and a vocab list. The conversation book that I use much more often includes dialogues from A1 to B1 level. 
While I don't prefer it, it's romanized sentence by sentence too, but the translation is really helpful. I'm pretty sure all of the advanced books have vertical text. These two are still quite difficult for me, but I am getting there. Penguin's short stories is by far the hardest as there's no vocab page, Burigana is used sparsely and, quite frankly, I have to look up every tenth word. In comparison, Read Roll Japanese is much less complicated with its easy to understand glossary which is full of Japanese contextual words. Other than studying grammar from textbooks and practicing kanji, I develop my writing skills by writing diary entries. I don't do this as often as I should because expressing emotions is something that a lot of language learners find hard, and this is super important when it comes to communicating with others. Plus, it's great to know how to write about your day and your future plans because as simple as this sounds, you can develop them into more complex sentences as you improve. Next, we have essay writing that I typically practice using the squared paper notebooks. The Minano Nihongo series includes an essay question after each chapter. And these are a great way to practice using the grammar that you just learned. If you're wondering which textbook you should start with if you are a beginner in Japanese, please check the description below. In the same series, the kaite oboeru, or write and remember, is the method I use most to develop my writing skills. They are not only a great supplement to the main textbook, but they include further practice from each chapter, as well as a quiz to truly help you retain the grammar usage. Please note, these books are the old version, so they might be harder to find. If you're looking for an app that specialises in speaking Japanese, definitely download Kaizen. Not only can you practice kana and kanji, there is a conversation practice from beginner to advanced level Japanese. For those just starting out, you'll be mastering your self-introduction as you have to do this in almost every section. I know I've shown you guys this add-on a lot already, but I can't stress enough how useful it is for me to practice almost all of my language skills using language learning with Netflix. The only feature I use is just removing the romaji on screen, but with Pro, I'm sure you can save words if you're an avid watcher. It's more convenient to watch it on your TV since having multiple languages on screen makes it much smaller. But at least you can have fun and learn at the same time. For those of you interested in business Japanese, while I do source these listening tests from YouTube for free, the JLPT or Minano Nihongo listening practice is very useful and it is much less robotic than Kaizen. However, the lack of conversation practice is a disadvantage. Lastly, italki is a more pricey, but the best approach to improving both your speaking and listening skills. Of course, you can learn almost any language, but I've taken over 50 lessons from both community and professional tutors which have been worth every penny. Once you reach a level in your language learning, you'll want to consume the culture of the language as if you were living there. YouTube is a great way to do this, where my favourite channels include Onomapu, who talks about topics in Wakari Yasui or Easy Japanese, Yama Momo on the other hand speaks super fast, but I love her shopping reviews and clothing hauls, and she's just super bubbly and happy in general.
And then there's the amazing Kemashi Chan, who is literally my hero when it comes to sticking to my language goals and my dream of moving to Japan. Her videos span from JLPT advice to documenting her time in different towns around the country. Now, I know that not everyone has Netflix, so Anime Lon is a great free alternative. This is basically language learning with anime, as the interface allows you to watch your favourite shows using English and Japanese subtitles. You can do things like highlight a word to have it pronounced by the character, instantly translate the word, and look through your translation history. You can also choose from a range of subtitles to suit your level if you can't read kanji or kana. There are still some anime that is unfinished, but you'll definitely find one that you'll like to watch. On the other hand, reading manga is also great. The only one I have is an incomplete set of Say I Love You, which I've almost finished reading, but I now want to read Fruits Basket. While it may be a little difficult to understand super casual Japanese, the great thing is that most manga have furigana, so you will at least be able to read it even if you don't understand it yet. But if you've watched it before, you'll have a good idea of the story flow. The four types of books that I think will really enrich your learning that aren't too advanced include magazines, travel and culture books, and surprisingly textbooks. My collection of magazines goes way back to 2015 and I wish I had more, but not only are they more than £10 in the UK, they're really heavy to ship from Japan. Anyway, there's so much katakana practice since many fashion items don't have Japanese names and I guarantee you that your fashion sense will definitely evolve after reading enough of these. Thanks to my Japanese teacher, whom I received this from, I will now be able to explore Tokyo once again like a local and visit more kawaii cafes. While it is only in Japanese, the pictures do really speak for themselves. It's divided area by area, so it's really easy to navigate and subsequently research in English. Irodori is the only textbook I've come across which has a whole section dedicated to tips for living in Japan. While I don't live there, the information is invaluable, as the culture is much different to countries like the UK and the US. Here you can find both English and Japanese translation which is super helpful for those advanced topics. The three types of culture books I have include ones in English, both English and Japanese, and only in Japanese. All three are just as interesting, but I tend to watch more cultural topics on NHK World. I also really hope to have a JSTV subscription as I'm obsessed with Japanese dramas. I think I'll stick to NHK for now as this is free and I can watch all sorts of Japanese TV programs from ones about J-pop to authentic Japanese cooking that you can watch in 18 other languages. And if you didn't know, they also have a free basic Japanese course which includes video lessons and a textbook. On that topic, rather than showing you guys all of my textbooks I use regularly and the ones I recommend, I'm going to link them all down below as I didn't want to make this video too long. However, I really really hoped you enjoyed the video. I had so much fun making it. And I would not only like to thank you for watching all the way until the end, but also a massive thank you for 50,000 subscribers. We have created such an amazing community and I look forward to making videos every week to help motivate me and you. Have an amazing weekend and I'll see you next week.